That does give me hope a little bit. If you yeah. crush a scene, especially the English, they'll rise up. They won't allow yeah, yeah, yeah. it. If you ban them, even if there's no clubs after COVID, then you're going to have a big problem with illegal parties. Yeah. And that'll be your own fault for crushing the, the legal clubs. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Killer Keller reporting to you live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. If you only just joined us, serves you right. Keller Vision app. Free download Apple and Android for all of your street culture needs. We're switching on now. Boom. And guess who's inside the place? Veteran legacy DJ Don, OG legend, the man like Dom Stanton Warriors. I love that intro. What more does intros, please? <laughs> good to see you, man. How are you? Good, I'm good, I'm good. We're both hoodied up today. I oh, know, we are well and truly. Yeah. And your lady just made us for you today. Yeah, pimping. Pimpin. Fresh off the press. Hold tight, hold tight. Keeping that's it right. inside. Yeah, that's right. What's, what's been going on? What's been really happening for you? Wow, it's been a really amazing 12 months of um, going for coffees every day. <laughs> We're basically neighbours. We live in the same sort yeah. of half really? mile radius. Um, yeah. Went for a walk the other day for no reason. For came no back. reason, yeah. yeah. And I went to Tesco's, didn't buy anything, walked around. <laughs> Sounds to me like you're I, having the, uh, the, the, the the COVID blues. Well, yeah, on, on days and off days. But I mean, it's, as an artist, there's not much to do. Uh, I think all us music people have been shafted more than anyone else. Yeah. Big up all the uh, shafted artists out there. Shafted artists, crew, hold tight, you know. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's right. a struggle, but um, mm. try to keep yourself sane, get out of the house once a day, try to make some music and stuff. And mm. But even the making music thing's a bit of a struggle, isn't it? Because there's no, like, clubs to play it in and stuff. You can make it X amount of tunes, you're a bit like, what am I going to do with all this? Because um, you road test stuff, don't you? You take it yeah, out on the road. And, you get, and also, you make tunes to play out, but then mm. you play out and have a good gig, and that inspires you to make tunes. The whole thing's sort yeah. of a sort of cycle, right? So mm. without that, and also, there's not much money you're making tunes these days. And it's, even if you have like a few million plays on Spotify or whatnot, it's yeah. not that much money. So yeah. the incentive's not so much there, although we have got tunes backed up, we've been putting out. Um, so I've been trying to like do other things. I learned to make banana bread. Didn't quite do Strong. it. Strong. Yeah. Downloaded Tri- loads of like these sort of online tutorials about cooking and yeah. hostage negotiation. I watched that masterclass. So he's big up that. <laughs> but then I what? Then I sort of have a list of things. Right, I'm gonna read those twenty books I bought over the last four years. And never read. <laughs> Read, learn how to do whatever and do some yoga and stuff but then you end up just sitting around all day making mm. beats scratch a little bit and playing online computer games which I haven't ever done before yeah yeah that, bad. I've got Warzone yeah. I'm shit it is still <laughs> after 12 months um, and yeah just I don't know time just sort of flies past but mm. uh, for us creatives it's a bit of a struggle isn't it? it is a struggle I mean for those of you who don't know about the Stanton Warriors legacy then you've clearly been under a rock and it's totally nutty fine we can't all be in the same place at the same time and same time conference you're catching up on Covid this is not his normal work out. He's used to playing arenas and going on tour with all sorts of uh, recognised, established artists, you understand. And, and uh, Dominic B is one of them, isn't it? It's a bit of memory now. Yeah. It does. It feels like it's years and years and years. Yeah. Once upon a time. But um, Tesco's wasn't my main thing to do for the day. I'm a high point. But, yeah. you know. I mean, you've... <laughs> well, same with you. Like, I didn't know. Killer Keller. Travel the world. We bumped into each other so many places in the world. All over the world. Like... Like the funniest place we bumped into each other was in uh, I was on tour in China and you were on tour in China. We didn't know about this. We went to a weird uh, jazz blues place in some suburban ghetto part of Beijing to get some uh, smokes mm. and bumped into you just randomly <laughs> in this weird bar in a dodgy area of Beijing where we were the only kind of like yeah. Westerners and stuff. And, uh, yeah, you, know, you couldn't write that. You couldn't no, write. I mean, who the hell would have, uh, who would have thought like, what? hey, yeah. what? <laughs> Yeah, no. Do you think that ever happen again? No. Nah, nah. And then you like, randomly, like, you weren't like, booked to play there. You were hanging out like we were hanging out. Mm. And you started beatboxing at a jazz thingy. You know, like, I think, was, if I remember rightly, the Chinese It was coached guys, on like, by you, to be fair. You guys yeah, were like, go get, on, do get it. Get on, on my a few drinks I was already in. had a few drinks beatboxing in, yeah. into we sort of bemused jazz Chinese dudes. And they were like, oh, what is this? And you yeah. kicked it off. And, um, yeah, many a, we had a few more weird moments around the world. Yeah. We bumped into each other. We also was in Thailand, weren't we? Thailand, yeah, we hired one of those like long ass boats with things and did the James Bond sort of mission around there. My favourite ones, to be fair, was when I was billed with you as a host, and we were doing like we did um, yes. Bristol, we did touring together, um, Bournemouth, uh, Sheffield, all these places. Fucking awesome. And what was interesting about that? Well, I'll be DJing, and then um, I maybe filter the beat down, so it's like, uh. 
And he would like take over the beat on, his, on the microphone and mimic the beat I was playing <laughs> perfectly, I have to say. And then I filled back up again, back into the beat. Although that is amazing. I'm not sure how you, not all people always sort of realise how good it was because sometimes, well, always your beat is so good, it's hard to sort of, you know, distinct yeah. between the beat and the real beat. But that was, that was cool because it's like an yeah. interactive DJ set and I'm doing this and stop the record and you work on a mic and you do your whole rewind thing with the mouth. and Because it's, it's got, a... because that, that world that you, 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 You've pretty much started, to be fair. You were one of the early adoptees. And if I was to have gone a little bit off centre, you know, it kind of loses people's vibe. But people, yeah. They, do, they don't want that shit. They just want consistency, don't they? But there's moments where, like, we do a, a rewind and you on the mic big never run up. And then adding your little beatboxing in, it's like an MC with extras in a way. Yeah. When a crowd are really into it, they can see what you're doing. They get even more hype. Oh, my God, he just did that. The beat is him, didn't mm. they? I always think if you're beatboxing, it's almost like just get my hands off the deck. So it's not me, it's him, it's him. The beats mm. come from there. MC um, Extras, see, I'm, MC I'm the MC Extras. With extras. It'd be a good MC name, wouldn't it? Yeah, MC Extras. MC Extras in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that, MC names. Good MC names. Um, uh, Gale Force. Ooh. MC Gale Force, blowing the wind. Yeah, blowing on the wind, eh? Blow you out, play the roof off. Yeah. Mm. I'll think about Hurricane. that. Don't yeah. rap names like that, you know. MC Tornado. Yeah. You've always come with good ideas. There was, you know, we, we had a, a good five year stint of always going to the gym together, weren't it? Yeah. And we'd have all these great ideas. Can we you imagine? Gym buddies, basically, on a cross trainer with that. He'd be beatboxing, yeah. I'd be doing shit beatboxing. We did do a bit of a viral thing with that, didn't we? Yeah, that was well. good. That was good, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, you, you beat me. Why did you stop me. going to the same gym as me, by the way? Because I. Honestly, uh, so, please. I joined um, a more uh, wankier gym, basically. I got a free gym membership to uh, somewhere You didn't else. like the working class gyms that he would... Be... It was pretty ghetto, that gym, wasn't it? And then we... Um, <laughs> I, I, was I got an opportunity it. to go to a nice gym. I sort of went with it, and it was a bit more, like, a bit less rough and tumble and a bit uh, a bit more, more jacuzzis and feminine soy lattes around. and stuff. And um, so I'm not going there. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's a traitorous but, babe. Yeah, but it was a good gym, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good you gym. You still going there? Yeah, I still go there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would do. I would do. I mean, this is the oh, thing, shut up thing. Like, this is the thing. It's not just the work that stops. It's the yeah. rep, the repetition of the lifestyle, the things that you're used to. And, oh, no, man, I don't like running around the park. It's shit. It does my head in. boring. Yeah. Do you find your fitness level? My, I just feel a bit like, Bleh. do you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, we were like working. We used to be fit as fiddles. They were like Adonis bodies and everything, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then boxing and yoga and all this kind of stuff. And now I'm just like, ugh, getting out of bed. Ugh. They I'm actually used to own. call him Don and Mick B because he had such a Don body. And we used to call him uh, Killer No Filler. Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <body was> like, <laughs> no, <they're... laughs> hey, we've got new gym names. Know, right, that's the gym buddy names. Mm. But, um, but yeah, not doing that fitness thing. Then less fitness you stuff you do, the more... Mm shit food you eat because you're like locked down like big up Uber Eats crew and all that mm. and you just lose that motivation don't you and yeah. kind of like it's just easy to fall into uh, hurts, not yeah. keeping fit because you just um, and it's winter and it's cold as England and you know yeah and also uh, you know once you get into out of that after two or three weeks of getting out of that pattern you'll actually start finding exclusive excuses not to do something exclusives Exclu <laughs> <laughs> excuses <laughs> you know you find yeah. yourself uh, oh I'm not going to do that today because it's really cold outside or mac and cheese I'm going to order it yeah. fuck it why not yeah. I've Done shit wrong. Anyway. Yeah, I've already <laughs> like, done wrong. I'm just going to have more. Yeah. yeah. But then you sort of have that kind of food hangover, like, the, you know, you had a weird, not so great Indian takeaway, whatever, night before, and you wake up feeling like, Ugh. Mm. then I have this sort of voice in my head, like, yeah, we'll sort your shit mm. out, clear that shit up, go out, go for a ride, make some music, and get, you know, get back on it. Then you get back on it again, and you sort of like up and down. And most artists I've been chatting to, mates of mine who are like rappers or DJs, or whatever, I do it as far as I can see, is going for this like, flow thing of like, mm. having some moments, oh, I'm making some music, I'm at home, got some free time versus, can't bother to get out of bed. Can't bother to get out of bed. I think bed. it's the same for everyone, you know. But it hits a, but yeah. You hit the ceiling, don't you? Of like, well, there's nothing else going on. Yeah, I don't think any artists who are like yeah. loving the lockdown. You know? No, 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 no. Not, not if you, not if you have. You're born tailored. to perform, whatever. That's yeah, kind of people. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people really are. I mean, particularly musicians. I mean, I felt like guitarists, drummers, all the kind of more labour-intensive instruments where you got that. That's a thousand, ten thousand hours of learning, and now, yeah. now they were already on a shoestring with regards yep. to having gigs and backline and having to pay out. And now the venues are going, they're going. Well, they're going to do sit at home and play their guitars. It's like people say, "Oh, but you got loads of time to sit at home and DJ." Like we don't we do it so long, we don't need to DJ at home kind of mm. thing. Or if I was a guitar, I play guitarist at home. But and also, like I think out of all the industries, it's musicians who like the gig economy literally are like the ones in not being looked after by the government and stuff. Yeah. They're not being furloughed and they weren't making that much money and then being in music these days isn't that great because of the Spotify, YouTube world means you're not getting that much through albums like mm. you used to do and the rest of it and they were like sort of living gig from gig anyway. That's taken away and the government's like whatever, retrain as a fireman or whatever and then 
they're really kind of yeah, destroying around. the music yeah. industry of England, which is one of the best music industries in the entire planet. It's the biggest first Look at, commodity, yeah. yeah. They just discard it. Was it not viable? You're not viable. It literally was said in Parliament. Yeah, well, they, you know, artists aren't mm. viable. Oh. Retrain as a something. I just think, like, it, it crossed my mind the other day because I was walking past one of the pubs around here and... I just thought, man, like time stood still for these poor bars. Like, all right, we're all meant to be in lockdown tier, whatever, but hold on, we ain't doing it. We're carrying on within our means to do, f yeah. just keep going. Um, Navigate the new normal, yeah, in a way. Just the new norm. Can, yeah. And the poor, these poor pubs, these poor establishments, gigs, venues, they're not falling into the new norm at all. No. They're being fucking done. Um, they're closing and, and the, the government came under pressure and arbitrarily paid some money out to some clubs and it was like a lottery so some got funding some didn't right. basically if everyone doesn't know like these arts council and governments chucking out money to people trying to help them under pressure after like campaigns by sort of artists going you're not looking after the arts but it, it wasn't fair it wasn't like uh like one person would get it, the other person wouldn't and then it was just like a yeah as you said a lottery yeah it was a lot and then it could at least have done it better it could have like looked at who's earned what and who's done this and like, at least helped people not who, you know, like business rates for that clubs, which they wouldn't even allow the business rates to do, or the rents or whatever. Mm. And all these small uh, grassroots clubs, which the country needs, all gone bankrupt and shut down. So when this whole thing's over, and they've all now been, they'll get turned into like condos and whatever, mm. there'll be no cool underground clubs. Yeah. And they will be able to gone. come back. They're gone forever. Yeah. Same thing happened in New York in the 80s, like Giuliani, he shut down all the clubs over draconian things. Like yeah. one person get caught with a spliff and the whole club shut down. And those clubs never came back. So New York, for example, the city which invented, you know, all the disco and house. Amazing shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. that cool shit out of New York. Suddenly gone, Manhattan was like, you know, turned into like Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they never came back. Never came back. And that's why, why about London, for example, like these, all these cool clubs going. They are going. And they know when they the rent's too high and it costs too much to build a new club and once they're gone, they're gone. Because property rates are too much. And, Poverty you know. and things like that, or rather working class, classes, full stop, they are the breeding ground for creative angst. And yeah genres and c culture you know and britain more than any country in the world has like mm. that going to fit size you know mm. the country the beatles rolling stones all this cool shit like they, they want to be supporting this stuff the government should be behind this and not sometimes government uh ministers whatever they talk about the arts they just talk in terms of like um you know opera or the theater and maybe they've been these are kind of people when you, i've been on these like webinars you're talking to people when someone like look like they've been like grouse shooting like, oh the arts oh yeah that's you know Roy Albert Hall. they don't even know what a club is so them mm. it's come sort of druggy thing or glass and yeah. sort of reprobates we're not supporting that that's not our voting block you can see they just have no kind of warmth towards that kind of grass which, which actually does my it does you my heading because if you was born in any era of any time whether it's the 80s or 90s these were like the most for our generations the only things yeah. that we had that would that are still being you know, picked up today as like real identity within the within the community yeah. and cultures. And but do you remember back in the day, the rave days? In effect, like banned house music. You'd argue, right? They, they wouldn't allow any clubs to play it. Mm. Um, it wasn't played in radio. Pirate radio stuff. Even record labels wouldn't even take it on. And when there was raves, where people we would go out in the middle of nowhere to their party, yeah. middle of Exmoor, to not annoy anyone. And even then, we'd get slammed by the police with helicopters and stuff. And then the press, the sun, and all that, be like acid house, evil music, and whatever. Yeah. There was concerted effort to dampen down the scene. Yeah. No matter where you went, you could be like a middle of nowhere and they'd knock you down. And they put a law in to ban repetitive beats with like more than two people in a place, or whatever. Yeah. And all it did was just make people more determined to do it. Yeah. And the scene blew up and we had pirate radio and had white labels and we we're like, fuck you, God, we'll do it anyway, blah, blah, blah. So they sort of, that does give me hope a little bit. If you yeah. crush a scene, especially the English, they'll rise up. They won't yeah, allow yeah, yeah. it. If you ban them, even if there no clubs after COVID, then you're going to have a big problem with illegal parties. Yeah. And that'll be your own fault for crushing the, le the legal clubs. No festivals are left, they're all going bankrupt. You didn't help them out. There'll be illegal festivals because it's not going to not happen. People are going to want to dance. Yeah, it's not going to stop. Yeah, if you, if you fuck up the legal ways of doing it. People are going to do it anyway, yeah. aren't they? I think there's a lot going on outside of music that dicta is, is dictating that theory with, yeah. you know, shops being shut. There's a lot more petty crime. There's a lot more, you know... It's going to cost going them all on. in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't help people now, yeah. it's long term, it's going to cost more. Like you say, the crime, the lack of... You know, everyone's going to be pissed off, aren't they? Like, we don't yeah. get any help. I'll become a criminal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just the way it's gone. It's, it's too... Yeah, I mean, how are you supposed to survive when, like, there's literally no money sort of given to you? Mm. We're all working how on, are you yeah. surviving? Uh, I nicked some Beyond Burgers from <laughs> Tesco's. <laughs> um, I mean, like a lot of people, I mean, we just, uh, you know, we had to sort of uh, tighten our belts and just literally, uh, 
I found myself like walking everywhere and just not spending any money and just kind of not spending any money. That's yeah. That's actually easier said than done. In London, especially. You walk I mean, out the door and it's like seven quid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had I had some savings, but I've kind of eaten into all that now and yeah. uh, got no money from the government and no like help, yeah. no no sort of funding at all. Most even in most most artists, yeah. uh, oh, have like same. limited companies, and whatever, and they pay themselves some dividends as and when because mm. January you earn no money, but February you might do, so you pay yourself as and when, which is yeah. a dividend. So because you don't pay yourself a regular wage, because it's not that kind of job, zero help from the government because yeah. you're not on a wage, um, which means, yeah, the vast majority of artists receive not one penny from the government. Yeah, forcing you to do other yeah. things. But I've got friends who might have a job working wherever. Even a friend of mine works at Starbucks. Nothing wrong working at Starbucks, but I, they got furloughed, get 8% of their wages. They were loving it. They were mm. like, sat at home getting all this money. Yeah, yeah, like, they're the winnings. You fair, know, fair. They fair. Win, yeah. well, I'm a bit jealous yeah, of them, but fair enough. But we're thinking, hang on, we've paid all this tax. We've done all the right things yeah. all our life. And then... When it comes to government helping us out, it's not like, there. Fuck you, you know. Is it fact that more people are dying? Yeah, that's a that's that is, yeah. And we it's, hit a hundred thousand um, as of a week ago. Is it COVID or is it COVID signed off as COVID? It is. It is COVID. I mean, there's some obviously old people with sort of ailments, but if they had COVID in the last twenty eight days, so it is. There's a lot of people still dying of COVID. Um, I know there's all the conspiracy things, like blah blah blah. But it's it's a COVID thing and. Also, the vaccine's coming, or it's here. So a lot of people are getting vaccinated, so there's hope there. I was actually talking to, um, on a WhatsApp group with DJ Slipmat, and he's on part of some group who find this super quick uh, testing thing. They're going to uh, test out to have, so they can have raves or whatever, or festivals where you get tested going in, and you can get your test result in 15 minutes as a way forward to do, that's the Ooh, most positive geez, thing I've heard. Sounds, sounds negative actually... here, you know. But... Um, yeah, that was that was yeah. Learn about that today, and he's they then they, mm. they want some DJs to test it out. Actually, I said I'd, I'd get involved. And just, Hell yeah, you do. You know, um, so yeah, the vaccine's rolling out. Um, hopefully, that'd be sort of good. And then if they do the testing thing, maybe some kind of live thing can kick back in again. Mm. But it's probably gonna be the last thing to go, isn't it, to happen because people don't. It's just main society doesn't really care about the art so much. Uh. They care about the banks, bail the banks out. They care about you know, did uh, but even the high street gets like when. Is getting money for their properties that haven't been used, but mm. us poor DJs and rappers and people. I think like it's, it's not so much. I think it's. I don't. I don't think people think it's as in governments think that music and, and stuff is disposable. I think what it is is they just think that it's it's just a cookie cutter where if these people aren't in play, when we come back out of it, then it's cool. There'll be others. Yeah, doesn't matter. Or they come back. or yeah. whatever. So it, they don't actually. They they look at the broader situation as being. Mm. You know, maybe a twenty percent concern, probably five percent concern, yeah. but but it's not the people and the individuals. It's like they, you're meant to be looking after the individuals, and they're not. At all. Yeah, and you hear about these big corporations getting bailed out and stuff. Mm. Mm. Like what? <laughs> all these like all this conservative um, friends of next door neighbour, blah blah blah, getting ten million for PPE contract mm. whatever, and didn't get fulfilled, and mm. the old boys' network of money going here and everywhere. Getting paid. And you hear about billions of pounds being sent here and sent there, and this company and I'm. You know, you can't help but think, hang on, what? We're like, what was if nobody on? was getting any money, you can all be all in the same boat. But the fact that some are and some aren't it does lead to some resentment. I definitely got a little bit of resentment. Like, well, hang on, what? Yeah. You know, what for paying tax on my life for? I'm working, being honest, and paying, don't think properly, not under the table, all doing things legit, and get fuck all. And I'm thinking, like, and those big uh, online companies now, they're you know, buying up Debenhams, buying up Topshop, all the high street shops. All their stock value of all those kind of companies have just tripled, haven't they? Yeah. So the world's going to be online. Yeah. Which the high street's been crippled as well. But if, even before COVID, the high street arguably is like it's been crippled like the music industry has. And the music industry like lost a lot of money because there's whole Spotify and no one's buying music yeah. anymore. Yeah. High street, they didn't allow, um, I'm not an expert on it, but all the business rates didn't change. They didn't make it easier for them yeah. to compete with Amazon and stuff. Yeah. So that's all gone. Once a, the high street goes, and it's just coffee shops and estate agents. And then... It means people don't go out. The one, the few shops which do remain, don't get a look in. That's They're right. Die as well because there ain't anything else yeah. there to look at. Yeah. Covid's a death nail. Mm. I don't live in a world where everything's online. No one goes out anymore. God, I could have. I'll just be. I've had a year of that anyway. I don't want yeah. more. I quite like going out and feeding something and buying it and chatting to the guy. Local, well, the local shops like down in Port Road, down the road from where we are now. It's like it was nice. Mates of ours had like shops and train shops and rare people making yeah. cool t-shirts, yeah. bespoke stuff, and like yeah. you know things like you can make stuff and sell stuff. Yeah. All these shops got to be custom taken queen out. in the house. Come yeah. on, all inside now. All it's all nice. It's individuality. It's art, yeah. you know. You don't want to be live wearing just like just generic sort of Nike stuff made in a slave factory in China. Yeah, yeah. We're making stuff, but all those shops be knocked out, you know, because of high rates and business taxes. Now COVID, blah blah blah. Amazon, 
God, it's a bit negative this whole kind of yeah, no, but, shit. It's but to be honest, stuff. to be honest, like you know, you've you've been on before, and uh, and we know your legacy values and etc. We will get into that as well. But uh, you know, to be, be topical, you know, we're not we're yeah. not more broader. But I like I like quite like being topical at the moment because uh, we haven't. I mean, it's pretty topical, isn't it? You know, and you are expert. You you are very much on the threshold. You love the news. You love getting into well, it. Well, bored shitless. You? Just read up and everything all day long. I do like to read. And Does learn that play shit. with your mind a lot? Um, I find it. Therapeutic, it's, it's yeah. reading, it's learning stuff, you know. Yeah. I'm a sort of like being on like Reddit app, for example, and Reddit's mm. a great app. There's always new stuff, but it's also new stuff where in a comment section, there's people arguing about different angles. You can always find different angles. It's always wrong to look at any subject from one side because you just get in a sort of in an echo chamber. Mm. But then looking at something at the other side, you think, yeah, that makes sense. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And it's like, yeah, but hang on, blah, blah, blah. I didn't think of that. And you form your own opinion that yeah, way. Yeah, and I think that's just good for your brain. Yeah. So you're not just reading like one news source, you're reading to learn. You sort of learn about psychology and how people manipulate stuff and, mm. you know, how you can make money out of stuff. It's super important, isn't it? Yeah, I even thought about like to make money, um, to make up a fake conspiracy theory and then... On uh, my friend even bought a domain, and then um, you channel people towards that page of clickbait stuff like, "Oh my God, look at this page!" Where they take yeah. it down, and then you have Google Ads at the top, and every click you get, you get like you know a million clicks, yeah, and twenty grand, yeah. yeah. But most conspiracy theories set up to make money. It's a big, you know, everyone's at home being skeptical and all bit, you know, not everyone's a bit confused, and whatever. And uh, I was going to do it as an experiment, make money out of it, but then tell everyone how it's made up. Just to prove how easy it is to manipulate. <laughs> but I didn't do that, but it was a thought process in my head. I got all this time to think, just to try and find some avenue of a, mm. a, like a social experiment. Mind. I mean, there is yeah. online is where it's at, and a lot of the independent artists, a lot of the independent creators, they are going on there. But like, it's using these kind of more. I don't know. I feel like the the, the new industry is taking on old tactics that were created by the independent people to get through but now they're just like using it as leverage to sincere, sincere, sen, be more sincere towards the product that they're selling when it's the truth is their their industry yeah i mean it's um it's just i think i think it's just like a it's almost like an open plan for these days everyone's just got their techniques big and small trying to do the same thing in a whole kind of like yeah. internet i mean when i was, we've been talking about before about how you promote tunes these days for example mm. There's no kind of like straightforward way of doing it. If, no. if you, if how much bigger following is, I think, or major labels, small labels, just trying to be afloat. And I sort of think more and more, say, say as an artist, you're trying to like a tune and put a tune out, for example. Um, it's like eight percent media, mm. your optics, how you look, your Instagram followers, whatever, and maybe twenty yeah. percent music. And yeah. I think that, that percentage just changes more and more towards just your optics. Mm. And the actual product itself is less and less. Yeah, that's right. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. back in the day, you can sell a white label. It doesn't matter. Who, who cares, no one cares what the name was. If in a record shop, you're like, yes, it's good. Boom, it blow up. Didn't even think of the name of it. No, it no like. artwork, nothing. Just put an X on it. Yeah. And it was good, it was good. Someone's got paid. Yeah. Boom. So they, they, back then, it was like 95% product, yeah. music, and 5%, you know, access. And then, it, obviously, over time, you can just be an Instagram influencer nowadays and probably make a tune and get someone to ghostwrite it and it'd be massive. I mean, yeah, and see, this is the thing, Punk's Records, you, you're the you're the head CEO there. Yeah, doing, doing, you know, keeping it real by putting out tunes that we love yeah. and like from different artists. Bangers. Yeah. And if you check out the Television Live show, you know, we're avid endorsers of the uh, of the label and the stuff that comes out. How important is um is the support of a radio DJ now for a record label? Is it particularly important? Do you know what? I literally don't even know anymore. I mean, um, there's so many radio stations and podcasts mm. and uh, SoundCloud and Mixcloud and all these different avenues. Um, obviously, it helps. It helps a lot. Well, it helps sort of. It's on Radio 1, maybe. Yeah. Then a lot of these DJs are playing tunes which, because of who's made them, not necessarily what they sound like. Mm. We certainly found that some tunes we sent to uh, certain Radio 1 DJs, we mentioned, um, they might like, not even open the, the file because our software can show us and send that same track back to them under a fake email address. Yeah. Give it like a, a name like brooklynhipster.com or something and then uh, <laughs> said DJ then play it on Radio 1 and love it. I'm like, well, you know, I don't understand someone doesn't like a tune anyway but they really like it because they think it's by some sort of young hipsters. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's, mm. a lot, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of artists we thought about ourselves making tunes under different names just to get the radio played. Just yeah, to yeah. kind of pretend you're some sort of get a picture of some random model with a tattoo on their neck as a sort of you know, Millie Vanillier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> whatever, whatever makes it work. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough these days. I think um, my approach would be to build your own following. That's mm. why with the Stanton Warriors, we just built our own following mainly through Facebook. Um, so we can just talk direct to our audience. Yeah. Hey, here's a new tune. We get a lot of interaction on there. So you haven't got to worry about whether we're Flavor of the Month in a magazine or on radio mm. or whatever. Mm. Peaks and trough. This sounds in. This sounds not in. This is not cool or whatever. We just got bam. Got like a you know one half million followers on Facebook. Put a tune out, 
and then the link to it by it. See, and this is what's really you know. important. I mean, I mean, like, being fortunate enough to have known you and call you a close, close friend for, like, since 2000, maybe yeah. even, yeah, 2001. Um, and just knowing the integrity that goes into it, trust me, people, this is, his walk is it, how he talk is it. Uh, but more, more, more definitive than just saying that, uh, I love the way that, you just, you guys are just so fucking relentless. It's breakbeat and that's it, fuck off. Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's our sound, it's our, it's our sound. And over the de- two decades, you know each other, different things come in, like dubstep was big and yeah. Electro House, whatever, you know, and people are like, oh, you should do this, you should rub that, or record labels come to us, so why don't you make this sort of sound? Or did low, we're just like, oh, it's just what we're doing, you know? Mm-hmm. And by doing that, we sort of kept a unique sound and then with, what comes about is get you have unique fans mm. who follow you, they like they like your sound. And because you haven't wavered and gone off into different things, we've sort of changed slightly where the core sounds the same. Um, we've evolved, but you have your core fan base. Mm. So when people sort of say, like, well, what's your ad- advice? It's kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit cheesy, but keep it authentic. Mm. Um, I mean, sort of originate, don't duplicate. You know, just do your own thing. And over time, you'll build up these fans and they'll come to you because they know what you're selling. Mm. It's a unique selling point, I suppose. And uh, as opposed to sort of jumping on the latest trend and doing this and switching there, just... Literally, just doing what you love as well because that's what we like. Hands down, like good beats, you know, like you know, and um, and you like a good sample as well. I mean, you've, you're a bit of a sample smith, aren't you? You've... Yeah, with this lockdown, I've been just digging the sample. I've been like, because sampling's a hard thing these days because like all, all hip hop and whatever has been sampled from seventies records and all this kind of stuff. Mm. So it's not renewable resource, is it? Seventies, okay, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the tracks been sampled. So with these like many hours you got to a lockdown, I've been like going down rabbit holes of like the other day I was just. Listen to like I don't know um, Turkish belly dancing music from the from Bulgaria Mad. in the nineteen sixties or something really niche as that and I find it's like weird website Ooh. it was all in a foreign language I have to use like Google Translate and it's just there's like a hundred tracks from there really obscure most of it was pretty shit but then I clicked on tune off the tune just looking for some obscure sample I thought no one's probably touched uh, these records yeah. before right and maybe it was like three in the morning I suddenly had a tune number seventy eight I was in bulk of twelve whatever and having a break and then go back to it. I suddenly found a loop on one of these tunes, this little sort of tablet loop, a bit like Mr. Yellow, mm. get a freak or whatever. I was like, oh, sat up in bed, it's like a moment, a eureka moment, oh my God, yeah, that sounds great, and sort of cut it out and looped it in Aperton. I was like, well, I go to bed now. You know, that ain't normal. Yeah. How do you, how can you <laughs> go through so many samples and what do you hear when you, when you find the, that, that I don't know, eureka. I do have that thing where I just know when it's just like, I could, you can picture in your head, you just go, oh, you listen to the whole tune, there's a bit where it breaks down, it's like, oh, like, get, get whatever it is. And you just cut it out and put it into loop here. I think, okay, and then put it just a kick in the snail. And you're like, that's the basis of a tune that but is. can't you and find that? You get excitement it? feeling. You don't, okay, that's something. But to like the average punter, like me included, you know, I mean, I'd be happy sometimes when I find it, you know, you have one of those days where you can't sit with for trees and you'd just be happy to find a loop that fucking works. Yeah. How, you know, if you say, for instance, you've gone through like, I don't know, 60 different loops, doesn't your brain get a little bit numb to finding that one bit that you're like, yeah, that's the one? In a way, that's good, right? You get, you get the, the numb brain thing. If sometimes I, I go for like a lot of promos, yeah, maybe. I like to keep abreast of what's going on in the house music. I don't make house, but I like to hear. Mm. And after a while, it all starts sounding sort of quite similar, like piano break, down, take me high, whatever. And your brain does go numb. Mm. But on the sample thing, you're right. Your brain can get a bit numb. Click, click, drop. You know, I call it needle dropping. You play the start of the beat and you drop the track. You put it in the middle. Mm. But the fact, the fact that a sample can come along which sparks that numbness or bring, brings you out of numbness, she says it's a, a sign. Mm. Oh, boring. Uh, two hours later, uh, coffee. <laughs> like, and that uh, is your instinct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you got to listen to that instinct. Why would why is your, why have you done why have you sat up in bed for like what? Actually, it's a good you point know? because I guess if you're in a club and you're dancing for an hour's DJ set, there's a monotony to that as well. Yeah, and then when you hear a really banging beat, then or it a pulls riffle, you out of them sort mm. of linear of the whole previous hour. Right, some of the tunes like that. A track, the last track we put out is called Somali Funk um, on Punk's Records, and uh, that's a literally sample from a Somali Funk tune. Now, who knew that? I didn't know that Somali. There was, there's a Somali Funk scene. I think it was in the seventies. And who? Do you what, know what the I mean? heck? What? Right? Exactly, because the internet, I won't get them on the internet. And I went down a rabbit hole of Somali funk tunes. And they almost sound a little bit like Bangor, a little bit Indian, right? Mm-hmm. They sound distinctive because East African has got a bit of a sort of uh, Islamic edge to it and whatever, but it's sort of African sort of rootsy vibes. Whoa. The whole genre did not know about it. I love yeah. music and I'm listening to these weird, wonderful tunes, crackly vinyl on these sort of random blogs, African blogs, like whatever, and I just find this sample. That's mad. Just chop the whole thing, mm. vocal, chop the vocal up, put a beat on there and bass line and some little bleeps or whatever from another mm. disco tune. Boom. I just called it Smiley Funk because it was, you know. So. Do you know what I mean? Just another day. Just another day. <laughs> Find <people>. yourself <laughs> Smiley Funk, yeah? Comments below. Find yourself some. Um, what's the day in the life of a, of a Stanton Warrior? So you and Mark 
from the moment you get into the studio? What happens? When we were getting in the studio. And you've got a while. Facebook. <laughs> then what? <Yeah. laughs> um, I normally uh, just, like I say, dig for samples and ideas. Mm. Always got ideas, thank God. And I've probably run out of ideas and just come with this sample, that sample. Uh, Mark's the engineer. And then I've got this, got that, it's somewhere here, what this, but this, or who this tune there, we just sort of go through tunes and mm. try and find something new. Because mm. that's the one important thing about um, producing, is just you want to enjoy the process, you want to be sort of stimulated. Not so if yeah. you're making generic music, yeah. you're just sort of making like cookie cutter stuff, it's probably just like, oh, here's a beat, here's a piano, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Take me higher, piano, bass line, finish. Mm. So I'm trying to make something different. Like the, the whole thing was smart, but I bought in maybe 20 samples, I found yeah. like cashier of tracks. And we then we found that one we used, and he cut it up. We cut up a few different ones, but that one really worked. Mm. Then we had a beat, and we did learn 20 different beats we looped up and sort of mix and match, like sort of a... Uh, what's that game you put the shapes Tetris, in? Yeah. Tetris, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's more like fun. Especially in Apleton, you've got like got six cool beats, six cool bass lines, and it's six weird and wonderful samples. Let's just see what fits. That doesn't... Oh, uh, 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 those three fit together. That's a basis there. You can always hear the tune in your head, and then we get excited and rock a tune out. How many tunes do you do at a time? You, like, we've got like we've got a load actually. We've got like maybe sort of 30, 40 unfinished tunes, even after all this well, time. Just on the go, just a, a yeah. Rotation. But then you sort of sometimes get to a bit where you're kind of stuck, and you're like, okay, well that's got a good sample, a bass, and a beat, but I don't know what else. You need something else. Mm. Uh, can't find it. Let's yeah. move on. But I think my advice is keep it thing snappy, keep it fast. Mm. Um, make the tunes really quick. Yeah. Because we've made that mistake of like making a tune. Especially when you're on an album project, and we, got, we did an album deal recently, and we do overthink stuff. You've got this tune, and you think, okay, it sounds all right. But you listen to it so much, like you say, your mind gets numb, mm. and you start changing it. Your version two to fucking, and your version twenty, and you can't hear it anymore. It's just ones and zeros, right? Oh, and you come in like yeah. you leave us, come back to a few days. I hate you. I can't start here anymore. And you come back in a few days, and you listen. You think, oh my God, the version one we did in one hour mm. is way better than the version twenty we spent two days. Kind on. of taking away the energy of yeah, it. And, yeah, you know. You know that guy, Mark uh, Rebuild it? I don't know his name. The yeah, guy, the yeah. piano keys, keyboard. Yeah, he, you see when he, you know, he does his stuff live yeah, on he, Vibe. Yeah, explain who he is and what he does. Cause, cause He's a guy who blew up on the internet by just literally just doing a live thing and then just, just jamming and then people throw in just live sets, people throw in ideas. It's pretty crazy. He's super spontaneous. Super spontaneous. Just, but he feels it York. out. And there's something to be said for that kind of like, right, I've got an idea for a tune, that's a good beat, fucking do it. What naturally flows out, dun, 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 let's just stick it in, stick it in, don't think about it. fine tune it all later, then boom, boom, boom. Then a rapper just steps up and just does things, let's just chuck it in, like a jam session. Mm. We just do it quick, 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 bang, get it all rough, finish, go to the pub. Yeah. You probably get better ideas in that raw moment. True. When you all sit in a studio and a singer comes in, you've got to sit and got rhyme like, how do you rhyme hello with get a bye, and everyone sort of stagnates <laughs> a little bit, sort of looking at your watch, I don't know, and it all sort of. <laughs> yeah. The singer wants to tell you a whole story about, you know, their life. You're like, well, I just want a hook, actually. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to be quick. And, I mean, I've mean, something you've learned over time. Mm. The pressure of, like, you've got to make a hit record, Rua, just make it have some fun. It makes something you want to hear. You you are, you're, you're very much like that, though. When I've been in the studio with you, another person that's like that is uh, Felix from Basement Jacks. Right. You, you guys are on some sort of level where you're just... It's almost like a, a, a Tasmanian devil spin of activity. Yeah. And you're like, no, do that, do that, do that, do that, no, do that, do that, you know? Just keep it flowing and keep it buzzing and kind of, you know. Yeah. There are some days you can't just, oh, I don't know. Is that sound right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know me? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. How do you deal with those days? You just don't know for a little bit. And then you like, just fuck it off. Go home. Really? <laughs> just, you know, some of the other days, you know, just you've got a tune and like, we've had some tunes where the whole tune's great. We haven't got a bass line. God, it's a good, good tune. Get the right bass on, lock it in, it's going to be a big tune. Mm. But every bass on your play, it's like, oh, that's been done before, that's been done before. And it's actually impossible to make a sort of bass on which hasn't been done before. Not impossible, it's super hard. Yeah, rather than it. just overthinking it, you want the bass on no one's head. Yeah, but look at like Groove, um, groove Minor Superstar, and that's a killer bass on. It makes something better than that. And you set yourself a too high a target mm. rather than just having something that kind of works with the tune and it actually sounds all right. Yeah, sometimes and, that cut target can be too much. Yeah. And, and, and fuck I, up the tune. Fuck up the tune, yeah. Like you're mm. trying to sort of reinvent the wheel. And then suddenly you've just actually just put a bass on which is sort of naturally fit behind and, and better, you know, and what's it called? Um, I can't word, but sort of uh, uh, boldened, embellished. Yeah, yeah, embellished. Sat behind, yeah. hold the tune. Anyway, that was actually all right. So when yeah. you sort of set these high targets, we had a record deal back 20 years ago and a big record deal of Universal and they were like, so you've got to be the new bass, you've got to be the new chemical, let's make something like that. I'm like, <laughs> what do you do? And then your brain's fried because yeah. of all the expectations. Yeah, every tune's got to be mm. fucking top 10. Like, what? Yeah, we'll just yeah, make yeah. sample tunes. I don't even. We're not even. We're not rappers or anything. What are we gonna do? Like enough producers yeah. have, hard, have enough time trying to replicate replicate the tune that got them in the top ten in the first place. Yeah, 
you know, that's one problem with artists who do get a top 10 record. A lot of times by accident, it doesn't yeah. even sound like their normal style. They make a sort of a fun record. It gets, you know, the charts and whatever. Mm. And then they're stuck in this, like, they can't really replicate it. And they're known for that one, one tune. tune. And they're stuck in that thing of like, oh, that's, you did that one tune. Like, yeah. And that's what they're known for. And that can actually sort of harm them in a way because yeah. they're actually better off maybe not making any tunes after that. Because yeah. they're going to judge that second, third, fourth tune with that big anthem they had. What do you reckon? Give me, a, give me an example of a of an of, a, of an act, a DJ producer act that has done that, but yet still, you know, has filled that quota, but can still go out with integrity. I'd say um, Benny the, Benassi kind of thing. Yeah, he's more like a hit one hit one, didn't he? Did that yeah. one machine? Yeah, which basically sampled a computer game. Mm. Which is like he just he made sort of, he, not his great tune, but he lucked in there. But he heard that it was a Commodore sixty four. Oh, that sounds great! Did it? But a bit massive. But he was lucky that he mm. found that sample. Mm. Um, and mm. he probably sat there going for a million computer games after that. Going, I've got to find something to equate that to mm. follow it up. But um, I would say as someone who sort of managed to maintain sort of hype with his productions, would be a Marvin Helden. Ooh, yeah. And and also he he's broken boundaries. He'd be like. You know, he's the first guy to put jungle style bass lines of house beats with mm. um, a spin spin sugar remix, a toy almost remix. Yeah, I remember that. He's a bit like, fuck, I did it my way. I put hip hop beats into like funk phenomenon into house, or I put a rapper over there so he wasn't sort of generic like the beef of house. Mm. And he comes back every now and again. And he did the duck sauce with that track. Yeah, well. he waits three years, comes back, smashes something completely new again. Yeah. In that, and man, a chart hit, but still being kept integrity and being cool and street in New York and the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and still smashes it. On his own terms, it's quite a rare thing to have yeah. that doing it your own way. There are moments that. where America really strikes that that place, which you know, in fairness, you know, they they brought some of the biggest cultures known to the planet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, definitely. Detroit house and fucking yeah, yeah, hip hop yeah. and jazz, and, but they, you know, with these one moments, like, you know, your Todd Terry's or your yeah. Van Heldens, and it's just like, what the fuck? I know, and they're just unique and just legends, and like, yeah. Like Kenny Dope, Gonzalez. Kenny Dope, yeah, yeah. He literally is dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, his, you listen to his, his catalogue, it's so vast. Mm. And he's just done his own way and he's smashed it. Yeah. Hasn't had to sell out and make anything cheesy. Catalogue, and... see? Yeah. A lot of there's... people can't wait for the catalogue. They, they're so impatient. You've got a catalogue. Yeah. Stanton's have a catalogue. I think because some people just want to, some people get in the studio and they're just like, right, we've got to make a hit record. Right, what's the big moment? Or what's on Radio 1 or whatever? Okay, that tune, let's just copy that. Mm. Well, like Todd mm. Terry or someone would be like, I'm going to make a fucking dope ass tune, my drums, my way. My, yeah. way, my way, and fuck you, fuck all your, you know, you've got an attitude about it in a good way. Yeah. Like real hip hop's like that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get Dr. Dre going, oh, I've got a copy, like, no, he just goes, right, well, I'm going to fucking do it this way. I'm going to mm. use this white rapper Eminem, which no one's really done probably wrong. I don't care, I did my way, use this, use that, and then just mm. sort of, they don't follow, they, they, they pioneer. Pa- plagiarism has become the norm, hasn't it? There's so much, um, I was listening to Kiss FM the other day, and like, weirdly, in, in an Uber. Which happened to be on, and there's just so much house being played. And I, you know, I, got, I love house from day one, but it just seems loads of generic remakes of like '90s house, whatever. Mm. And not as good as the original, like Todd Terry, Master Will. It's just like loads of cheesy generic stuff. I was thinking, oh my god, what is this? This is actually really generic, mm. soulless, gritless mm. house. And I was just thinking, it's gonna be a bit depressing, really. Even the Uber driver agreed. <laughs> It's actually shit. Over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know, you, <laughs> you know, a lot of Uber drivers are actually musicians and producers. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I might have start Uber driving. Fuck. Yeah, um, but um, no, the uh, uh, the landscape of house. I think um, I'm sure it still applies now. From when I was out doing things, oh, I'm not I'm nowhere in the house zone, but I was working with different house producers. Yeah, and they wanted like that kind of vocal flute thing, you know. Um, and I was like the kind of go between between me and my ex at the time was kind of programming it in, and we were taking different vocal strains of ours yeah. and kind of thing. And you know, it blatantly, you know, a lot of them were like, "Yeah, no, just take that, take that sound somewhere else, take that kick from over there, take that thing from over there." They, like they literally, there's no bears. They'll just take yeah. a house kick that's probably been used multiple times on different records and just plonk it there. Yes. And yeah, and that can sound kind of like. I sound boring in a way, you know. I saw an interview with, um, funny enough, with Kenny Dope talking with Marvin Helden. Hmm. I think it was an A-Tractor's podcast, whatever. And he was saying about how uh, he wishes uh, all these new house producers would use the old drum machines he used, which make the, give that kind of gritty sound. Mm. And how they'd have to wear well, things so formulaic these days. A, it's true, but B, hearing it from him, mm. of all people, 
It was really kind of like a wake up call. I'm not that I made. If I made house, I saw that I'd be like, God, he's so true. Right, I'm gonna get rid of my like just laptop, whatever, and just get the old SP type MPC drum machines. The drum machines they used to use are old thing, big big things with clonking weird, uh, their own kind of quantize and a, a kind of twelve bit knock to the kick and that kind of old thing. Guess in, yeah. And it's just yeah. that's what you know. That's what real hip hop's made on. That's why hip hop beats like bad, you know, Wu Tang, whatever. It made any sort of old machines. Like, yeah. Dunk. And not just like these sort of tinny kind of laptop things. And that's where it's been lost. Yeah, it has been Bring lost. back the old equipment. Bring back the old and just go in hard on it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't try and sort of do it for the charts. Mark's, uh, Mark's he's, he's fucking got moves, hasn't he? Yeah. He, on on an engineering production yeah, trip. Like, and also he plays all instruments and can sing yeah. and stuff as well, you know, so he can sort of, we can knock things up and say, so, mm. yeah, so it's a symbiotic relationship. We just like, just bang things really quickly. Get out, here's trample. Doesn't work, forget it. Move it, bite this place on. Doesn't work, forget mm. it. Da-da-da. Yeah. Just keep that thing flowing, as I'm saying. Yeah, do you think there's a yin and yang between you guys? Like, uh, you know, you, we're the best duos, you know? Like, you'll, you'll have the yeah. person that's quiet and just kind of a brainiac scientist. And then there's you that's a bit more kind of mad scientist. And, yeah, I sort of scavenge and forage for things. Mm. I can bring it in and he can sort of make it happen. And then I go and forage for things, and, uh, you know. Mm. I did deal with sort of music technology. So I went to university, did music technology courses and everything, but... My brain is, I'm just, I just forget all that shit. I'm just like, mm. technical stuff, and it always advances. I'm just happy in finding samples, thinking what works, testing it out, and did learn, keeping an eye on what I think, you know, and then DJing it out. Mm. I've been DJing since decades. Decades, but, um, and decades, and decades and decades and decades. Decades and decades and decades. And that's the beautiful thing about playing out. You can, like, test it out, and then the crowd doesn't know the tune because they haven't heard it before. Mm. So what they react or not is completely organic, isn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, this is their new tune. You slip a, a mm. tune in. and you, A tune you thought was amazing, you made in the studio, like, oh, God, it's going to kill it. It's going to mm. smash it. You play it, the crowd a bit like, energy drops down. Yeah. Like shit. Then you kind of know, don't you? Yeah. Sometimes it's happened weird moments where I've played tunes which sound a bit kind of simple and I've actually played the wrong track. I mean, back in the CD days, I like CD track one to ten. Mm. And I just quickly just burnt a CD before gig somewhere. I'm maybe a bit drunk to mm. a DJ, and I just put track five on, and track seven. That's the wrong track. Yeah. It's gone off because it's loud. This tune, which is actually just simple when I listen to it, it's not much to it. Loud becomes a sort of beast in its own. We realise it's a big tune. Ooh. We'd never have known it had I not accidentally played it and just sort of. That's uh, funny because you know, yeah, you'll have it on the disc as like tits track two. Yeah, or you know, you forget bomb. because you have so many yeah, sort of scenes, nothing written on scribbles and shit. Like, and the, the yeah, 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 like, yeah. One, Oh god, I got to play it. And I got twenty seconds left. Uh, mix it in. I just drop it in anyway. Yeah, and it's gone off. And it's happened a few times. Right? Is it? Because a tune played loud can sound completely different, obviously, in a tune just in a studio. In a studio, maybe you analyze it too much. Which mm. is a kick and a snare and that weird noise it's not that special but now that noise sounds like something electrified and it makes the beats bigger and whatever makes the, the hook and if harder. the crowd go hey then that's you know you yeah some... and then when the crowd go hey and you have a really particularly good night where you've it's not always great as djs artists you play sometimes and mm. the crowd will be like we're waiting for the techno guy to play that's off it. to you we're here for dumb and drum and bass and whatever mm. it is it doesn't always work out you know especially for like us we're quite a niche sound so we get booked to play all these places where we're the only people playing our kind of sound where mm. it'd be a dubstep drum and bass mm. house whatever and then sometimes, um, you know, not some, a lot of the time, like a gig will go off if, if it's like a kind of crowd and, and the great everyone's chill at the end. You could, I did a good job. That set was good. Played how I wanted to. Took it in the right direction. You feel accomplished and mm-hmm. satisfied as an artist. And then next day in the studio, you're like really hyped up because you've got the vibes it, yeah, going. Yeah. You know? I'm like, right, that's it. Now those kind of beats really work. We like bass on tune work. It makes more more stuff like that because they like that. Those kind of samples are, are working better. Did a lot of you just like yeah serving the live show. Serving like yeah, and I say it's sort of what's that word when it's sort of S- the course, synergy. Like, when things like go around in a circle, you've got like that feeds that, but that feeds that. Yeah, it's, cycle. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 you know, drop I mean? in the comments. Yeah, drop in the comments. You know, what yeah. yeah. Obviously, that's all lost now. The no gigs. You saw. Uh, so a lot of fun. A lot of artists are making deeper stuff because they're stuck at home. I think they're making more honest stuff. Yeah, because they haven't got to worry about it. <laughs> big fucking drops and shit because they're like. <laughs> Stuck in home, so they're kind of making stuff a bit more yeah. depth and like how they want to make it. Yeah. So maybe that's one positive, one silver lining from the whole lockdown is you're going to get more honest music possibly. From well, yeah, more obscure music. I mean, because every yeah. every time people play their own tunes or someone else's tune in their own set, then they yeah. get knocked off of social media. That's the other downer. So maybe there'll be some yeah decent music. I think all genres are getting a bit cookie cutter. Yeah. You know. I think that's probably what's the be- that's the best thing to come out of yeah. it is people gone back to the literally gone back to their uh, drawing boards, so that's pretty cool. That's needed so much because sometimes I just go through a genre. I mean, I, I'm not really up on what's going on like hip hop, for example, but I go right. I'm going to like listen to top 100 hip hop tunes on Spotify. Mm. Mm. 
you know, I used to be a hip-hop head back in the day and, like, all the records and everything, and I'm listening to all this new hip-hop and everyone's mumbling and shit, and I'm like, fuck, I get quite depressed after Tune 52 about mm. up in the club. And I'm thinking, well, you know, it's coronavirus. Who's up in the club at the moment? Why, why, yeah. It's, why do you people have a more protest vibe going, like Public Enemy or something? Why is everyone just, surely that's going to, that up in the club and boasting mm. shit is going to be, like, less because of coronavirus? People are going to come out with more honest hip-hop shit, you know? All that kind I of think vibe. people are just fucking burnt. I don't think they've got the energy to protest, which is actually scary. Scary. I think the last thing you had in hip hop, like maybe Kendrick Lamar doing a kind of sort of yeah. righteous sort of protest, it's going to be all right, whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, I think everything's a bit too generic these days. I was listening to Old Public Enemy in the other day, like Fight the Power, the kind of angsty, mm. I guess you call them protest songs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. A bit of Dylan in it all, you know, and yeah. where's there's not enough of that going on. Not enough, nothing. You know, there's definitely, def, definitely things to shout about these days. Um, yeah. More interesting kind of topics than up in the club, my yeah. bitches and whatever. It's just a bit... Yeah, it's kind of done, man. It's boring, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like... it's, it's, and the, the, the new stuff, I mean, you know, drop the comments in, tell us what's good, because obviously the, there's a wind of change and there is going to yeah. be a, 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 a turnaround of events all being well, yeah. but... Um, and I hope if that new music does come out, which has a bit more, it can still be a banger and still be a good club tune and still something more dance to, but it can have a bit of a more of a positive, interesting message mm. than just like, just sort of gangster shit, you know, it's boring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's nothing we ain't heard before. It's nothing that isn't available. I do like the fact, though, that there are, when sometimes when you listen to those protest records from the 80s and 90s, you, the, the, the irony is that these things come back in full fucking circle. <laughs> Yeah, you can yeah. listen. You're listening to it again, and it's like, well, there you go, America. Well, actually, all the artists yeah. pissed off about coronavirus, not getting looked after the government. I think it's the same in America as well. They've got a reason to be pissed. Yeah, off at least now. they've got a reason to. Yeah, you know, we didn't get me furloughed. Fuck you. You know, they can be like angry about their situation the last eighteen months. And Have you out made of... any music that that kind of suggests that at the moment? Uh, we made some um, deeper sort of music, um, which we hadn't put out, and we put out during sort of, stuff that was backed up. Mm. We didn't make our album. And that's just done really well because it's sort of a bit deeper, a bit more homeless, a bit mm. more Spotify than club. Mm. Um, I, we have, we have in the past, yeah. We had um, the first time we ever did it actually about a protest song was um, about fifteen years ago. It was when the Iraq War was going to happen, mm. and there was a demonstration in London. I think Jesse Jackson gave a speech, mm. like a million people in Hyde Park, or whatever. Damn. And his voice is very Martin Luther King esque, like you know. Um, and we were playing a fabric that night. And we sampled his voice because we always p played with a sampler before the laptop thing. I'll be DJing and mark out a sampler on a keyboard and triggering samples, and that was always our, our angle. I think we were one of the first guys to do that kind of like mm. decks and effects thing. Uh -huh. But always have sort of app things. Even when we won the football once on the same day, we sampled <laughs> it. And during a breakdown, we used to like four hour sets of fabric, the best sound system in the world, and everything. We filtered down, and then and then, and he got a goal, and Becker's got a goal, and as in the sort of crescendo, the drums coming in, it was like just stuff like that, and the crowd would go but, go ballistic. Yeah. But there was, um, but yeah, so I was playing this tune we'd done, an instrumental, like a bass line, like a roller. And um, then Mark dropped in a speech of Jesse Jackson. He's like, um, you know, War Machine will give us fierce opposition, you know, give peace a chance, whatever it was. Tracks with Hope Time. Oh, he said a chart, we turned into a chart, you know, it's heating time, it's hold time, give peace a chance. And, and we had played just over crescendo, held up in the drop. And the place went fucking ballistic. So we wow. looked at each other, we both were thinking the same thing. That's going to be on a tune, we're going to make a tune. We actually made it, we just called it Hope Time. Stuck the vocal on top of it. A lot of our tracks came out of like accidental moments like that. We had a track even before that, back in 2001, we put, we'd done a remix of um, Buster Rhymes. So we yeah. had an acapella no one else had because it was the, the remix we had done. And then we put it over this sort of Gary's tune and we added another beat on top of that. So the beat, a Gary's tune underneath, and then the acapella at the top. And it became a tune itself. We put it on our Staten Sessions Volume 1. Nice. And then mm -hmm. Pete Tong started playing it as a cutout from the actual mix. But it wasn't a tune, it was three tracks playing together. And it became a tune itself. We just gave, we just sort of, you know, edited up a little bit and put it, made it into a track. Like a mashup kind of thing. Yeah, sort of, yeah. And then um, it actually came out, it went um, top top 10, top 7, no, 17, 12 in the charts on top of the pops. And uh, it was our it was our mix, basically. That's crazy. Well, they got shafted by the American hip hop um, managers. But, you know, it was like a, came out as, Oh, and again, the, 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 the radio DJ, you kind of work in accordance to what they're doing and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, we'll, we'll go with that because Pete Tong is up for it. And yeah, and it's like, a, but having that kind of moment where you can just chuck things together but and it just, 
it's a literally an organic moment. Oh, that works over that, and you can mm. sort of get ideas. But yeah, that was a protest song, Mad. I suppose. It was a kind of anti-war song in in by accident. And then putting it out, and actually, someone during all the riots and um, Black Lives Matter activity in America, people were tweet retweeting that thing because it had oh, a similar cold. message about yeah. give peace of chance, there's hope time, whatever. Mm. And it did to kind of fit the narrative of like, oh, everyone just fucking, you know, yeah. fight for justice and stop killing each other, and whatever. That's crazy. Isn't it? Maybe, it's mad. To maybe think. make a new protest song about. You have to make a new protest song. Government fucking throwing all the arts under a bus. Yeah. <laughs> A good little fit, yeah. <laughs> theme for track. Yeah. Let's start it tonight. Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking mad time. It uh, is. And who knows? Did you ever think you'd ever come to this point in your career where you'd just be like, let you, just hanging about waiting for the, uh, fucking, I know. I mean, the doors yeah. to open? I know, because go from all that high activity, like we were gigging every weekend in mm. uh, all over the world. And we just had an album out as well, which means you know, this last year was just chock a block of... Um, yeah, back to back, back you were busy. Back, all the big yeah. festivals, we had some big... We had some sort of singers involved. We had some live sets with like a glass and like Sean Evans and a track with from Sheen. Mm. Dread MC was an MC, a little combo going on. And we had like maybe 30, 40 festivals and two tours of America, the Far East, Australia, blah, blah, blah. And to go from all that to <laughs> buying coffee, which is overpriced and pretty shit and mm. just as your sort of main high point of the day. Is quite overpriced a coffee. He's yeah. overpriced coffee. But you've got to be positive about all this because you've got to be like, um, you've got to have gratitude as well. Let me say a bit almost all moany pants about it all because I end the day there are people worse than us often us. some countries are really suffering yeah. and you know we're still here we're still sure. vibing um, and yes you know we have been sort of left out by the government but um, there's people worse off and yeah. you know, people are dying and there's all that kind of stuff so we have our health and uh, all that so I keep a positive thing as well obviously we have a bit of a moan because it's yeah. some, some moany catch up but um, <laughs> yeah. but you know people are a lot worse off in other places and people, yeah. you know in, in in London people a lot of people we've all known people who've died and mm. passed away and yeah and, uh, rest in peace oh my god yeah, too so many actually to mention too though, many you know? yeah so um we wouldn't want to miss anybody out you know yeah so we we you know, we're positive people as well we're yeah. doers we're doing it we're doing not just yeah, giving we're up you know, we're doing our do no but this is an important conversation to have yeah. I mean there's plenty of people out there that, that get get the sentiment. There's people out there now that are absolutely relating to this yeah. one way or another, you know. Well, we can. I mean, to, for advice for people, people like who are sort of suffering and like stuck at home, especially those in the arts, it's a, you know, they're trying to navigate the new normal. I don't know what his advice is actually. It's all, it sort of sounds a bit cheesy, but it's like, I keep trucking on. But like, hmm. there are people, you know, mental health issues have gone up for a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. They're, shit. they're stuck at home and in weird environments, talk, can't pay man. the rent. Anxiety of like, yeah. where's you know. Um, talk, well, talk to people. Yeah, you know, get, get on these sorts of, get tune into these sorts of sh shows. Not just mine, anybody's. You know, what I mean, like, there's live streams. You know, Stanton Warriors do do live streams as well. You know, we're just keeping the, keeping the uh, connections. Connection, yeah. yeah. Reach out because I know a lot of people who are just sort of stuck at home. It is easy to just like not give up, but stay in bed all day, oh. get fat on pizza, not do anything, get stoned all day, and all the rest of it. But um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, people's got to keep trucking on, basically. And uh... it'd be so. Listen, you know what? As you just said that now, you probably, if you were watching and not listening, or well, you're probably listening and watching. But if you were just saw my eyes kind of widen at the prospect of like, yeah, man, like I could just stay in bed if I wanted to. That's yeah. actually a really pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could order a pizza. Would anybody actually give a fuck? I don't know. I know. So it's easy to fall into that kind of slumber. I, yeah. I, I certainly have it. It's locked. There've been times I've just. Maybe a bit of a sort of drinking session, work up a hangover, I think, oh, fuck, I stay in bed, I'm hungover, order pizza because you can order mm. everything. Then just feel like a carb overload and you're tired again, and you're like, ugh. Fucking knock out. And a yeah. flat becomes a mess because you've got pizza boxes by your bed and you wake up, oh my God, who am I? Yeah. In that moment of clarity, like, right, come on. And that clarity, it. It, it can happen at any point, but follow it through. Do not stop on the hurdle. If you can, I mean, I'm not telling everyone to do this shit because it's not easy, but just quit the fucking drink for a bit. That, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Especially if you've got kids, man, you know, you don't want to be, you know, the, the home tutoring and stuff. What the fuck do I know? I ain't got kids, but, yeah, you know I mean, like, no one wants to see anybody drinking over. Have a break for alcohol. A lot of people, yeah, yeah. should do that. I mean, ourselves included have stopped doing having, you know, yeah, moments. Yeah. And I've got friends who are just getting, that's talking frankly, getting stoned all the time. Maybe just pull back on the weed. Weed, yeah. All drug taking is not, not the best thing to do during that. Yeah. Stuck at home. I mean, it's bad enough at raves sometimes, but like, yeah, and just trying to be healthy. I mean, even going for a walk. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't bother to go for a walk. But I force myself to go for a walk. Yeah. I don't regret it, you know? No, that's, that's the that's thing. That's the important thing. You don't, you might be, even the rain. I've gone for a walk in the rain. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? It's raining. Yeah. 
But I get back and I thought, well, I feel a bit different. I'm going to sort of tidy that up and do that and whatever. Yeah. But maybe if I hadn't done that walk, I would have just been like, uh, play computer yeah. game. So sometimes just simple things like, or calling your mum or yeah, something, you know. Yeah, anything. And also, Check just in. going back to the kid thing, you, anyone looking after the kids and that, that having to do the home tutoring and stuff, rest assured, you guys are probably going to be the first ones that get serviced to get the kids back into some sort yeah. of education. And it's so everything that you're doing now, whether if it's habits that have been developed, you just got to try and rein them in for a short period of time, I yeah. think, isn't it? Um, from I, mean, I guess it's extra tough for you with kids at home, isn't it? For yeah. sure. Can you imagine trying to do your own work if you... <gasps> I feel like a big kid myself. <laughs> trying to look off myself hard enough. But hey. Big up all the parents. All day, big there. up all the parents. That shit yeah. ain't easy. Um, I can't even imagine. Can't even begin to imagine what that must be like. No. Yeah. No, or, or, or with families, you know, that have ill parents or ill family members that well, ill family I've got friends of family members who you know grandparents who are in like, um, or people's homes and stuff who mm. are like ill and they can't and see they, them. they're ill and they can't see them and maybe some unfortunately some will pass away without having to see their relatives because yeah. of the corona thing and yeah. that's you know that's sort of extra extra tough and um so it's tough, you know, for a lot of people out there. I feel a bit bad that we're moaning about stuff ourselves, but I mean, it's on, you know, it's cool. We, we, we you know, yeah. we, this is this is an hour plus long podcast, and we're we're delving into moaning if we want to. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> bad, lily pad leaping from one moan to another. Yeah. But no, you know, it's 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 that season. We're we're in this place where it's still. Well, thank God January's yeah, over. Mad. January was definitely worth moaning about. Oh shit, was January? I mean, we had like <laughs> fucking insurrection in America. We had like. War, no, riots here from Russia and then the weird coronavirus like Britain leading the world in deaths which mm. is sort of a horrendous milestone and mm. the winter the shittiest month anyways and it's cold and miserable mm. but now you know we're, we're out, out of January and kind of uh, we've got that so that's a positive thing yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> most depressing month of the year behind us hey, so. and I tell you what as well like there's some you know kids of like 15 to 16, 17. No, it really ain't phasing them. They're out there on their bikes. They're doing what they normally do. Yeah, and they just got no school. They're learning shitloads off YouTube. Makes my kids. They're like, yeah. yeah, my son just learned like Japanese. How'd you do that? Oh, we did it on YouTube. We just learned like <laughs> Ableton, the like, keyboard expert. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish this was when we were younger. We could, oh, like, man. Can you imagine? Learn all this shit. That's, that is one, another little silver lining, mm. which is important to like note these up. It's like the stuff you can learn online. You can yeah. just learn anything. Yeah. I learned how to like paint my front door. I haven't done it yet, but I learned how to do it by watching like John the Builder, mm. Handy Andy, where he's called. Um, <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm going to apply myself. Cause I thought I mean, paint my front door is just pulling apart. Like, I've got to pay someone to do it. I thought, hang on, I can't afford to pay someone to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Fucking learn that shit. No, oh, man. So, you all know, day. I know yeah. you've done that. You've learned all this stuff yourself. And like, that's quite inspirational. Like, he's just learned all the editing, all the filming. There's mm. no one else here. There's no team here. It's just me and him. And that's mm. that's quite, you know, yeah, sometimes get stuck on something. For what I'd kind of do, you'd fucking persevere. Why is that sign? Why is there a... <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can do it all yourself. I appreciate, you, say, I appreciate you yes. saying that. It's but, you know, not even the haircut. You know, you've got to get your haircut. Oh, I'm fucking Hang on, I've got my hair. My hair costs a right old mess. I mean, she costs money as well. I mean, I love a good haircut. Who cuts I mean, your hair? I do. Well, yourself? Yeah. See, cut his own hair as well. <laughs> Whilst programming and coding and everything else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> the fuck you cut your hair? Uh, we just get the mirrors. Got a couple right. of mirrors. Well, long and horrible, but uh, you, I mean, you but it's you different. Your, your hair's different. My mine is shaved. Mine's a right. double. Yeah, I might just have to be a, come a bald head. Yeah, you just to get shaving, man. But the thing we're not sinning. I don't really care. You know what I mean? I just like can't be bothered. Well, that that does come. I let myself play. go, but what you know? No, that what? does come into play. It's like, well, what really matters? Is it my hair? No, Zzzz, off it goes. Back in the day, we'd be buying brand new t-shirts before a gig and like pimp trainers and mm. the rest of it. And I'm just like, oh, do I really need that? Yeah, I know. Hundred quid in trainers, so I need that. I kind of got like that anyway, but you've always been bougie. You've always gone and spent money on in bloody been what's it? Members hang on, you've always shit. Gone, yeah, but you've, clothing wise, you've been definitely bougie. I want a better phrase, but like, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And I never sort of, well, yeah, but um, <laughs> but not now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all These changed. days, it's all about just like not doing anything and just cooking at home. Mm. But it's maybe mm. that's, that's another little, little silver lining. Um, it's just like you're kind of learning to budget and like. And not sort of waste money. That's right. Shit you waste money on. Can you, know? you imagine? Yeah, we used to do. Yeah, I mean, we used I, to go for copious amounts of coffees everywhere, didn't we? So I'm still doing that, but like, <laughs> but if, you know, I'm sort of less likely to get an Uber or this or that, or spend money or get on it or you know, an after bike, whatever. Um, and then all the money you spend on, because when you travel so much, as you know, from being on tour so much, you sometimes spend money just to ease the sort of stress of being on tour. Mm. Like you go into holiday mode, you'd be like... Holiday mode. You go to a nice rest... You'd be in America, you'd be in New York, you'd be a night off, you go to a nice sushi restaurant, or you, you sort of 
the hotels, you pay for night. Yeah. Well, the promoters are paid for the night you're, still, you're performing, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, in between those weekends, you're paying for yourself and you still end up staying in the same hotels they put you in, which are five star hotel. You're clocking up all this money, come back with these tools, mm. having spent more than you've earned, and mm. oh, but you had a great time. But all that kind of stuff, I'm thinking, God, I wish I'd saved that money and not like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when you break it down, because like you say, it's a holiday thing where. You land in a place you haven't been for ages or yeah. you've never been. Got a pimp diner there. This is a new taco joint being recommended. Did Let's go for travelers, yeah. get on it. Give me half a chance. If I was going to New York tomorrow, I'd be like, right, well, I'm setting aside 600 quid. I don't care if I got it or not. Yeah. That's a holiday mode. Because, you know, it's 24 hours there, you know. Pizza at fucking three in the morning with yeah. donuts. Come on, I'm get in. You involved, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you it's do. You just get involved. But, yeah, I definitely sort of realised I sort of was wasted money on a lot of shit. Mm. But no regrets. Had great times and just, you know... We are where we are. Mm. But there's something we haven't spent anything. There's artists yeah. we know, we want to name the names, <laughs> just super uh, frugal and maybe like, yeah. it's just, you know, they just had that kind of thing going on where we've been to probably, we splashed out and enjoyed mm. ourselves, haven't we? And yeah. sort of, you know, we yeah. get the round in. Yeah, we do get the round in, get don't we? In. Not we everyone always... gets the round in, but we'll get a round in. We always get the round in. Um, also, I do feel like as artists, I and mean, of course, it's a fucking. It's a killer podcast. It's a fucking we're talking artists and music, culture, shit. Uh, you know, so if you know if you if you're not getting the vibe by now, here's you know, the deal. Um, we uh, we've become adapt. We we are um, we're adaptable to climates to a certain degree. We we can deal with the stress of being under the radar. And then, you know, manage ourselves when we're above. You know what I mean? When some people... Put the parapets up and down. Yeah, because like some people like... Yeah, and more power to these people, by the way, that have nine to five lives and have had that all their lives. Um, because the discipline of that, waking up, shirt tie, blah, 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 that's a lot. But now they haven't got that, some people are finding it really hard to try. And, well, how do you hustle? How would yeah. the, We've always hustled. Always hustled, yeah. I think my, my theory on that is like... You've got to be in it to win it, literally, because mm. like, you got to go full, fully into it or not. Some people dabble, you know, mm. they do a bit of this, a bit of sort of social media, ask for some gigs or whatever. I'm gonna get, I've made a new tune, I just want to get those gigs off the back of it. And they will, have you done this? Have you done social media posts? Have you pushed mm. this? Have you phoned the promoters? Have you chatted this guy, done a collaboration with him? They're like, oh, I haven't thought of that. Mm. Um, have a romantic way of looking at things, thinking mm. they just got to do this and this, make a tune, stick it out there, and maybe things will happen for them. I wish it was like that. It used to be yeah, like that earlier on. Yeah. But the whole hustle, you got to, kind of fight for it and kind of just be out there and like as you said the social media but smashing it every day and chatting to these people and doing this and make that collaboration work and chat to that radio DJ and sort of nudging mm. that person to play that and nudging that person to book you there and da -da -da. all that stuff is a 24-7 hustle what's, uh, what what you know? uh, advice can you give anybody if, you, if you're a 9 to fiver or you're a musician advice on hustle well, if you're a 9 to fiver want to be a musician or you're 9 to fiver and you just want to hustle <laughs> stay in your 9 to five. yeah yeah <laughs> well what's the, art of, what's the mindset of hustle what is the mindset of hustle uh, just being absolutely determined to get to the goal you've set yourself, which is to be an artist, or whatever, and uh, mm. literally doing everything in your power, every sort of sweat, blood, sweat, blood, and tears to get there. No matter how um, low you think you're going, you can't go low enough. Yeah, you've got to fucking. It's just that because life. I mean, another cheesy saying, but life is short. Like I always knew from a very young age, from age of twelve, even. That I wanted to be a DJ. Mm. Even at primary school, we were collecting lecture records and getting rare records from some dealer who had tracked something from New York and sort of from Bristol. And there was people with the, you know, this like secret world of rare, like what's this, pre hip hop stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I just did everything in my power to get to that position, yeah. everything possible, yeah. any angle, any opportunity, the hustle, that was just like oh, tunnel vision, boom. Mm. And that's, I guess that's a true definition of hustling. It's a true definition of hustling. Knowing, but it's also knowing that goal, knowing what you want, you know. Tunnel um, vision. Yeah. Some people, I mean, if, if you're not used to that tunnel vision of just doing things, you know, and working within the restraints of like, okay, I might even just survive on 10 quid for the next one. People would call you actually a bit naive and foolish, but but then yeah. it, it's, um, it's, it's he who it's dares. That's what you've got to do to get, you know, mm. take risks. I took a massive risk, Michael. I remember being, I mean, I'm, from, I'm from Bristol, I had it quite good in Bristol. I was like running, working in a record shop, which at the time was a really good thing for DJ because I'd accessed all the shit. I had my own club night, I was playing on radio. Um, I was a teenager doing all this that was quite established for a certain mm. degree Bristol was a popping city with mass attack and Portishead and all these kind of cool things coming out of time gave all that up on a whim to go to London to London College of Music to study music technology mm. landed in London with nothing and with no contacts in London or like you know a whole different world mm. conquered Bristol to a certain degree enough to sort of survive as, in the music world been like sort of gave it all up to start again you know and then sort of built that up again and just hustled fuck for that <laughs> 
And then yeah, somebody got to reinvent just to do it, I think. But if you want it, I mean, if you're passionate about it, you will do that, I suppose. That's right. That's, 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 that's recording. Yeah. Because if you don't do it, here's the biggest problem, right? If you don't do it, and I know people who haven't done it, who want to do it, and they're sort yeah. of like, maybe they've uh, had the dogma of like, oh, no, but my parents, I should do this. No, that's not what society tells them to yeah, do. Like, and they've done something else, and they become yeah. like so-and-so manager of the uh, whatever human resources at Corporation X, mm. and they've got to like, you know, our age, and they've got a nice car and a wife called Susan, whatever, and they met, <laughs> they met in accounts. And they have this regret that what could have been, you know? That's the worst That's thing. the worst regret because, well, you should have tried it out. I've had friends who actually worked in corporate stuff, well, not just any old job, and I've just literally pushed them. I've got a close friend, I pushed him to do it, and he got some music stuff and smashed it. And like, I'm happy, I'm happy for him. People like, people like that just kind of... You know, the, I'd hate to have that, like, what if thing. And just not oh, I'm too old now, I've got kids, I've settled, settled down. Uh, yeah, man. They're basically not completely happy and satisfied with their job. Mm. If you are happy and satisfied with your job, that's fair enough. But if you're not, and you're getting out of Susan from um, accounts and you're in human resources, <laughs> not knocking people who do that job. But if you or have anyone that, called Susan. Or Susan, great name. <laughs> or Susan's. Uh, or Susie. Um, but if you ha if you'd never if you had that burning amb ambition inside of you, you, ne you never did anything about it. That must that hurts. Mm. So rather than have that, at least try it. But you might try it, and it might not work for you. But at least you know you tried it. And then you can set about going. Yeah, it wasn't for me. You know. Yeah. Like we always you know, say, like you want to be an astronaut. Mm. But you tried it. You couldn't do it. Couldn't get to space. Okay, well, at least I tried. But if yeah. you haven't ticked that box of trying, then it's tough. It's you true. Know? Yeah. Pe people live with that regret pretty pretty deeply. Yeah. Don't so we yeah. haven't got any regrets. I mean, some. And I'm sure we haven't either. We've done, we've done our thing. We've pushed for our, you know, we've done our traveling and done our music and brought music to millions of people, whatever. Mm. And that's a nice thing. So yeah. sometimes, you know, a big gratitude is a good thing. Like, even though it's all shit now, um, we can just think, you know how, like, um, on your iPhone now, it's a bit like with um, Facebook, it f flashes up old pictures. Yeah. After the new update, right, for iPhone people. And suddenly a picture will come up from two, four years ago in Beijing or Sydney or whatever. And you're like, well, what's that? Oh, remind me. There's things like a memory, which you might have forgotten about. Playing in front of a big crowd or whatever it is, or even just with friends on holiday in somewhere. That's cool. And you think, yeah, oh, that was fucking cool. And maybe a bit down in the dumps because you sat at home on your fourth coffee. But like, you remember that moment <laughs> with your mates in some sort of far flung place. I'm talking like Kazakhstan mm. and Ridge, you know, all these like mad places. Yeah. And you think, okay, well, I did that. So it's not yeah. so bad. I think it's a bit of a lull now because of COVID, but. We had those moments. I think there's ones where you don't remember a single moment of when you tweeted that or when you posted that that photo and you're just yeah. like, fuck, what was that all about? Who are they? I mean, you sort of zoom in on it. Oh, that's so and so and so and so. Like, it's Guess nice. to show, you know, you can have a good life if you really were to be yeah. nudged by a technology. Yo, you did this, you've done that, well done you. Yeah. You know, it's good, it's good, isn't it? Thanks, iPhone, for reminding me of that. Yeah. Put my day up, let's give another walk. Uh, technology you know. does have its positives, doesn't it? It does, it yeah. does, yeah. yeah. It's not all bad. It's not Gratitude, bad. it's a good thing. So what's the future then? What's the future? Um, well, hopefully this COVID night will be over mm. sooner rather than later. I know it's not looking that positive this year, is it? No. Like gigs and whatever. No, no. Um, just got to keep positive. I mean, um, I've got a million ideas for music. One thing I have, to have plenty of time to sample, mm. sample hunt, dig, um, which have always been my thing. So I've just been like down, I say rabbit holes in new music. So I've got a lot of new music ideas. Um, and I just think, yeah, I just don't know. Like, just sort of have to wait it out, I suppose. Yeah, wait, yeah. Things, like radio shows and things being offered might sort of do sort of pass the time. Um, mm. Just got to keep trying to make that banana bread and do that yoga, neither of which I've done. Making that banana bread, you know what I mean? Bread, <laughs> um, but maybe sort of, I've got, to, I've got to get me more disciplined in my life. Like I literally sort of told myself to read those books and do those things. I haven't done that and I feel a bit guilty about it. Like, okay, well, if you're not going to do that in this downtime now, when are you going to do when it? When are right? you going to do so part of that, I'm a bit like pissed yeah. off myself for being like, what have you done today? You've been make some, you know, you've been just... I have to admit, some audio and physical reading books, I have set aside in my head, I've got to do that. Yeah. Just for my own learning and developing, you know, things like this, you know. Yeah. But you, yeah, you just get waylaid, don't you? Well, sometimes you sort of watch some downloads some sort of YouTube, whatever, like learning about music theory or something. And you're like watching again and again. And my mind starts drifting towards something else. Mm. I've got no, constant, I have to rewind it and play it. And I think that's sort of, part of us looking at social media and all the sort of mm. dopamine effect of like pinging and you know, Twitter or whatever. It's yeah. not good for that kind of sort of, or maybe it's like retraining your brain to learn because it's not since school days when you have mm. to sort of study. I reckon I've sort of developed ADHD of just like, I'll be watching a movie, I'm looking at my phone, I'm doing this and I'm, I don't know, I kind of sort of. There, there is definitely some ADHD yeah. in you, Dom. <laughs> definitely. I think so, I think so. Like, I don't think anything's calcified at all. I think that's just your yeah. nature. 
It's just to try. I mean, I'm the same man. You just you get. You just get, get some animal shit. It's focus and just get right. I'm going to learn this and learn that. But you've smashed. You've learned so many programs and stuff, and editing and all your like sort of graphics and stuff. That's fucking. Oh, thank that's amazing, you. you know? Thank you. I mean, you know, this. What is a fucking you know diary or a phone book without a thing? You've yeah. got to do something, and you know, again, just like highlighting. Man, I was there. You were there when I was there. You saw me at it. Where it's like, yeah. oh, what I'm doing. And then you've, you've evolved put... it immensely. I mean, I'm just like, yeah. I often think about people have skills as well. Something I thought recently I had was like people like skill swapping. A friend of mine like went to DJ Ooh. lessons. I was thinking like, I'll give you DJ lessons if you what's good. If you give me like copy, whatever it is. Like, yeah, that paint, is a banging how do, idea. How do you paint your house? I don't. I've never done that before. I don't know. Just whatever. Teach me how to cook green curry. Just stuff like that. Where obviously we don't want to break the lockdown rules, but you know like. When you got, when you can do that. Just swap in like skills. Does like, that does it, does that exist? I don't does know. That... But I just had a sort of thought the other day. I was thinking like, you know, I was saying I want to like learn how to sort of. I don't. Weirdly, my lock fell off my door because I got a shit door, and I'm thinking oh, I couldn't do it. And I gave up. I was like, right, I'm gonna pay a locksmith. I'm thinking that's genius. Someone could just come around and teach me this, and I just teach them as a scratch or whatever. Like that is amazing. That's such such a... we like well, you could swap. Yeah, swap job. Oh, swap job. Don't no idea, guys. But um, Dude, that is a, that's genius yeah. idea. Because then you will spend money, you know. Yeah, don't spend money. And no. and one one of the rules of swap job would be you have don't to talk about swap job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are three rules of swap job. Hang on, no one's gonna know about it. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we just made it public. Um, but you you have to come in with uh the food that you're gonna be eating as well. So the the person that is doing the job. Other than a cook, in the, yeah. Yeah, and the other person has to cook. That and that, that's the, that's yeah. the other mini rotation that goes on in this trade. You have you learning some shit, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I also think, like, if you like, if one of you knows Ableton, one of you knows Logic, and you don't know the opposite thing, you teach me that, and I'll teach you that. Then you've got two programs, but you know, that's, that's like, cold. I love that idea. It's just a simple thing, and it's something mm. to do as well. And it's sort of, and if someone's coming around to teach you, even if it's online, I think it motivates you to do it because at six mm. o'clock, you've got an online thing of a mate of yours to teach you something. You're more like to do it. Because yeah, it's something you want to do. Yeah, I suppose it's like, oh, I've got to watch these four program things I've downloaded. And there's someone actually to go, and we get stuck sometimes when you learn at home. You get to, oh, fuck this. I'm going to mm-hmm. go and like, go to the fridge for the 50th time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like 20 <laughs> minutes. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. But if there's someone going, no, 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 you've you got to unclick that button there. Oh, right. It's going to be a bit better work Man. for a learning curve, right? So. Swap job. Swap job, seriously. Swapjob.com. And also, it doesn't have to be too grand. It doesn't have to be like, oh, we have to now go and create this app. No, you do this in your communities. Yeah. Just do it in Just your community. Teach your mates, you know. Yeah. Teach me garden, I'll teach you yeah. bowls. Mate, whatever. See in the state of them cupboards. They're still the same as they were 10 years ago. Yeah. You can get, like, get yeah. a cupboard expert round. Swap shop. Who wants to learn how to beatbox? Right. Come on, get it on. Beatbox lessons, and you just, someone mends your cupboards, and you <laughs> yeah. teach them how to beatbox. <laughs> yeah. For someone sat at home, like, who's cupboard. Skilled, yeah, That'd be quite a good little thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, totally. I'll right, be watching you. I'll tell you onto page. something. That's for yeah. sure. That's so that shit. is what the future holds for Stanton Warriors, yeah, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> New track swap job. The soundtrack to your swap jobbing. Yeah, <laughs> swap jobs. Yeah. yeah, they got a track or a hook. That's right. That's right. Yeah. On it. Get yeah, that's the future, basically. <laughs> Learning shit. <laughs> Learn shit. Open up your sort of skill set, I guess. Mm-hmm. It was lovely to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Big ups. More life. More cool. life. We love it. Big up the comments. Big yes. up the kid kind of had me in and uh, just loving this whole setup. You can't really see on the, what I can see, but it's like a full scale studio. <laughs> it's amazing. We got nuclear. Yeah. Yeah. Loving the podcast. Thank you very much, Dom, my boy. Cool. Big ups. Too long I've known this man. Super Don Dada. Good mate. Dom Stanton Warriors. We are anyone's out of fashion. Don't talk to any strange ones. All right. Stay lucky. Take care of yourselves. Swap job. Peace. <laughs>